In this tutorial, we're going to walk you through the steps to create the vectors for this, the Vectric widget. This will cover many of the drawing tools within the software to create very accurate vectors, and we're also going to demonstrate a variety of ways that these can be achieved. So let's start by opening a new copy of the software, and we're going to create a new file, and we're going to go for a single-sided job. We're going to have a width of 9 inches and a height of 9 inches and a thickness of 3 eighths of an inch. We're going to be working in inches. We're going to have the Z0 position at the material surface and we're going to be working with the XY datum at the lower left. When we have all these, just press OK. Now the first vector that we're going to be creating is the outline for our vector widget. Now I'm going to demonstrate a few ways we can actually go ahead and create those vectors and they're going to be utilizing the smart snapping options and the transform shortcuts. Now the transform shortcuts are always available to us but we need to make sure that the smart snapping feature is on. Now it is on by default and we can tell that it's on by going to the view toolbar and this icon here which says toggle smart snapping on and off is highlighted in blue. Now you can see if I turn that off that is now grey and if I turn that back on it's now highlighted in blue. Now that tells us that the smart snapping feature is currently on. Now we can access the smart snapping options if we wanted to change any by pressing the F4 key on the keyboard or we can go to edit under the toolbar and select the snapping options there. The options that we are able to toggle on and off from the view toolbar are these ones here and we can also do that within the snapping options form as well. Now these are the various options that we have with smart snapping and you can go ahead and choose to check or uncheck any of those as you wish and that will enable and disable that particular feature. Now in this example we are going to be demonstrating the majority of what the smart snapping can do so I'd leave those as they are there. And I also do have my smart snapping radius set to 10 which is the center which is the default for the software. And I can just show you the actual radius of that by just pulling up and you can see that if I just go back to 10 that is the radius that I'm working with which my smart cursor will pick up any nodes or vectors or significant points to give us some help in creating our vectors. So I'm just going to click X on the form there just to exit out of that and I'm going to go straight into the polyline tool which we'll find here underneath the create vector section of the drawing tab. So let's just click into that and before we get started using the smart options and the transform shortcuts, we're going to add in our first point, which is going to be our anchor point where we can start creating our vectors from. Now our first point is 4.5 in X and 8 in Y, so I'm just going to simply type those in and then click add here and you'll see that that has now anchored that in place in the 2D view for us. So all we need to do now is simply create our vectors. So I know that I want to go 3.5 inches to the right and you'll see that it's making use of the smart cursor as that has locked that horizontal line there for us and all I need to do is just move it over until that L just underneath the mouse cursor actually says 3.5 and just click there and then go down follow the vertical line that's given to us by the smart cursor and then lock in 7 I'm going to go across 7 again like so and up 3.5 and you'll see how nice and easy that was using the smart options there. Now if I just undo all of those until we get back to our original anchor point, I can show you another way we can go ahead and accomplish this same thing. And this is going to be a mixture of using the mouse and keyboard. So all we need to do is simply point the mouse in the direction that we want to go and type in the length. So I'm pointing in the right direction here. I'm just going to type in 3.5 and then I'm going to click in enter on the keyboard that's now created that point for me. I can point down and I'm going to go down 7, press enter. I can go across 7, enter and I can go up 3.5 and click enter again. Now our next point in this outline for our vector widget is actually an angle of 38 degrees. Now depending on what our snap increment is for angles we may not ever be able to achieve 38 degrees exactly as you can see I can't here. Now what we can do is we can go into the form here type in 38 degrees and I want it to have a length of 1 and I can click add like so and I can then go ahead and complete my shape. 
So I'm just going to move 1.5 up and then I'm just going to join that back at the start there like so. Now there is actually another way I could actually achieve this. So if I just close this, I'm just going to go ahead and select that and delete. And I'm just going to go back into the draw pyline tool and I type in the same anchor point and type A in Y, click add. And this time I can actually go ahead and just purely use the keyboard. Now the way it works is I enter the X value first. So that might be 3.5 if it's positive going to the right or it would be negative 3.5 if I wanted to go to the left of our anchor point. So let's type in 3.5 and you'll see down the bottom right hand corner we've got a value which reads 3.5. Then I type in comma and that accepts that value as being the X value and then we just type in the Y value. Now our Y value is going to be 0. So type 0 in there and then click enter and you'll see that our first line has been created. Now as we want to go down for our next point what we would do is we would type 0 as we don't want to move in X then we type comma and then we would type minus 7 and then press enter like so and this time we want to go negative in X we want to go minus 7 comma 0 enter and then we want to go up in the Y axis but don't move on X so we would type in 0 for the X value comma then we want to go 3.5 in Y and then press enter and now this time instead of entering the angle increment and the length value in the form we can actually do this on the fly by using the keyboard shortcuts so we just type in the angle that we want so I want a 38 degree angle we type in the letter A to represent it's an angle so you can see down the bottom right we have A colon 38 and then all we need to do is give it a value so I want it to be 1 inch long so I type in 1 and you see that value 1 has come up simply press enter and that will then create that vector for us now the reason why I've shown you all the different ways we can create these vectors is because they're all going to come in handy in different scenarios and situations where we want to create a particular vector. So you will probably never use just solely one. You want to use like a com combination of all three different methods of actually creating those uh, polylines. So if I just undo all of that, the quickest way of actually creating the vectric widget may just be to drag out and just using the smart cursor like so. So go up 3.5, now I want to do 38A, 1, enter, up 1.5, and, and I can actually close this vector by pressing the tab key on the keyboard, like so, and that has now completed our vector. So I'm just going to close out the polyline form. And the next thing we're actually going to add to our vectric widget is we're going to add some radius to the actual corners of our vectric widget. So I'm going to go into the filleting tool, which you'll find here under Edit Objects. And I'm just going to use a normal fillet and have a radius of half an inch, like so. And all you do is simply take your mouse cursor around on all the corners and you wait for the little tick symbol to appear. And you simply just click on your left mouse button, like so. And you can do that to all the angles of our widget. And then just simply click close and that has now created that for you all as one vector. So let's imagine that we've got this far into creating our outline of our vector widget and we suddenly realize that we need to make a change to the actual vector itself. How do we go about doing that? Now that's not a problem. We can utilize the node editing mode and this enables us to edit the constructs of that vector. Now what it is that I want to do, I want to move this vector here over to the right a little bit. Now it would help if I just go back into the normal selection mode, it would help if I actually defilleted these corners first to help uh, maneuvering that vector in the node editing mode. So how we do that is we simply go back into the create fillets tool and we come over the fillets which we want to defillet and you'll notice that now instead of the tick we have the cross. And all we need to do is simply click the left mouse button and those will disappear. Simple as that. So let's just close that form and we can go back into the node editing form now to break up this vector and then move that one span over to the right a little bit. So let's go into the node editing mode by selecting this icon here and then all we do is we select the vector like so and you'll see that we've got all these nodes available to us. Now we want to basically cut this span out of the vector. How we do that is we go over a node, so we hover the mouse over the node, we press the right click menu and we select this option here to cut vector. Now you'll see to the right of that 
we have the letter C. Now that means we can also use the letter C as a shortcut if we're hovering the mouse over the node to cut the vector. So we'll cut this vector here using the right click menu and this time we'll hover over this node and we'll press the letter C. And you'll see that now it's just those two nodes that are visible. That's, that's because we've now cut that successfully from the rest of the vector. All we need to do now is get the normal selection mouse back. So we can press escape on the keyboard or we can go back over to this selection mode icon here and that will then bring us back into the normal selection mode. Now there are two ways which we can maneuver this vector over to the right a little bit. The first is to use this option here underneath the transform objects. Now with the vector selected we can select the move selected vector, type of move is relative and we actually do want to go over 19 30 seconds of an inch. Now how we do that is we can type this in so we can type 19 forward slash 32 and we can press the equals key which is going to give us the decimal value of that sum and then all we'd have to do is press apply like so. Now the other way of doing this if I just control Z to undo that is actually click this vector one more and that will send it into transform mode and all we do is we simply hold the left mouse button down and drag in the direction that we want to move it a little bit by and because we have the smart snapping uh, cursor on it's going to move horizontally in the position that it was and all we do is press 19 divided by 32 and you'll see in the bottom right hand corner that that's doing that sum there for us and we simply click enter and that's moved at the same distance for us and with that all that's left for us to do is actually rejoin the vector together and we can do that by using this tool here and that's called the extend vectors to a common point of intersection so we simply click it and the way this works is that we need to click on the vector that we wish to extend so as you'll notice that every time I hover over a different vector you'll see that it gives us a different line of extension so what we'll do is we'll select this one first and simply click the left mouse button to accept that I want this one to go forward and then what I do is I then click on the vector that I want it to join to so I'd click here like so then I'd go towards the top end of this vector and click and then I'd click on this vector here which it joins like so and I'll simply close that and all I need to do now is just trim off the extensions which are not needed so to do that we simply go into the interactive trim tool here make sure that we have rejoin trimmed sections automatically checked like so and then use the scissors to simply snip away here and snip that bit here and then when we close that and select our vector you'll see that it has now remained closed so the last thing to do here would be to add in the fillets so let's go back into the fillet tool and let's just fillet those two corners like so and you can just close out that form and the next vectors we're going to create are going to represent our drill holes when we come to toolpath these so we're going to go over to the create vectors and we're going to click the draw circles tool so click on that and we're going to specify a diameter of a quarter of an inch so just type in a quarter of an inch there and all we're going to do is simply take our mouse and we're going to snap it to the center of this radius corner so all we do is go to the radius corner go out a little and you'll see this icon here which now represents the center of this arc here so simply click like so I'm going to do that for all three corners just going to snap there like so and snap there like so and then we're also going to draw a vector which we're going to almost cookie cut out of the uh, outline of the vector widget that we've already created so let's just change the diameter to, to 3.5 inches like so and then what we're going to do is we're going to snap that circle to the center of this line so if I just follow the line and you'll see that the mouse will suddenly change to this point and this means I've found the center of that vector line so all I need to do is click that and that will now place that 3.5 inch a diameter circle right in the center of that line for us like so so the next tool we're going to use is going to be the one to subtract this shape away from this shape so let's just close the draw circle tool and just deselect all the vectors and the tool that we're going to be using is this one here the subtract out of the welding tools that we have under the edit objects now how this works is that first of all you select the vector that you want something to be cut out of so select that 
and then we hold shift on the keyboard and we select the vector that we want to basically subtract out from the first vector so I'm just going to select this one here and then what we do you can let go of shift now and you can simply go over to the subtract tool click on that and you'll notice that is now cut away at that vector like so now I'm just going to come up and click this icon here and this is going to zoom to our active drawing area like so you can also hit the F key on the keyboard that is the shortcut to do the same action and the reason I'd like to do that is because the next thing I would like to create is a rectangle and I'd like to create the rectangle and then I'd like to align it to the right hand side of this vector and also align with the bottom as well as then what I want to do then is I want to move it exactly 1.5 inches up from the bottom in line with the right hand side of the vector now there are two ways we can do this we can use the alignment tools or we can use the transform shortcuts so first of all I'm just going to create the actual rectangle now again I can create the rectangle from within this form or I can freely create it within the drawing area now just to show you that you can use uh, calculations whilst creating vectors I'm just going to demonstrate this to you using the transform shortcuts so I'm going to start dragging here with the left mouse button just so you can see this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start typing in my calculation now this is only a simple one for the actual width of this rectangle and it's li literally just 2 plus 3 divided by 8 so 2 plus 3 eighths and I'm just going to press the comma and then I'm just going to assign the height which is 3 quarters of an inch and I'm just going to click enter and that it's as simple as that to create a rectangle using the transform shortcuts obviously we can still do that within the form here but I just want to show you what is available within the drawing tools within the software so let's close the draw rectangle tool and I'll first of all show you how we can do the alignment using the form so with the rectangle selected I'm just going to shift and select the outline of vector I'm going to go into the alignment objects and I'm going to use this option here to first of all uh, align the rectangle on the inner edge of the vector widget like so and then I can go ahead and click this one to align it to the bottom like so and then I can go ahead and move it that rectangle up using the move selected objects tool now if I just undo that the other way we can go ahead and do this is to utilize the horizontal and vertical snapping that you get with this smart cursor so simply click again to put it into transform mode and simply drag over the points that we want and we should just be able to snap directly into the bottom right of each of these and we just zoom in just to show you that they are both in line like so and then all we have to do is simply drag again in the upwards direction and only do it slightly while still holding the left mouse button down and simply type in the amount that you want to move it by and click enter like so and that's the way you would do it while you see, uh, while using the transform shortcuts now I would actually like four of these rectangles all equally spaced up the right hand side of my widget so what I can do is I can utilize the array copy tool for that so all I need to do is select my rectangle go into the array copy tool and then what I do is I simply choose how many of rows or columns that I would like so I would like one column and I would like four copies so four in total you put your total amount in not how many extra that you would like and then what we're going to do is we're going to put a gap in between each of these and the gap is going to be 3 eighths of an inch so I'm just going to type 3 eighths and press the equals key and I'm simply going to uncheck group copies and press the copy button there like so and I can simply close that and then what I would like to do is I'd like to create uh, another rectangle for my text for the Vectric widget text and I know I want my text box to be roughly the same uh, dimensions from the top of this rectangle here to the bottom of this rectangle here now if we don't know the actual measurements we, there are various ways we can get those but the easiest actually comes within the tool itself so all I would need to do is simply start clicking there and you'll see that I've started creating a box I can simply match it up to that node there and then all I need to do is start dragging out in the direction that I would like to create uh, the width so and then I can simply just type in the actual value so again with the transform shortcuts I just type in 0.75 and then I type in X 
and that will then give that value for us. So I'll just do that again, so I'll just undo that. So hold the mouse key down on that point there, so I can start dragging, and I'll come down to that point. I then want to drag out, and I'm just going to start typing 0.75, as you see down the bottom right hand corner, and I'll just type in the value which I want to assign, which is X, and that will then create that rectangle with that value in X, like so. So I'm just going to close the draw rectangle form and what I'm going to do now is I want to align this rectangle in the centre of my widget but I want to keep it in line with these three re rectangles here. So all I need to do is I can again I can utilise the smart cursor functions so I'm just going to put it into transform mode and all I need to do is simply just drag it over until you see that I hit the centre there like so and I can just simply let go and I know full well that that rectangle is now in the centre of my vector. And what I want to do with that vector is actually stick in some text in there. So with it selected I'm actually going to go into the draw text within a vector box tool like so. And then I'm just going to type in my text. So that is vectric widget like so. And I'm going to use a single line font and from this selection I'm going to choose Helvetica 1L which just means one line and this is going to be perfect for engraving and you see that it's picked up the dimensions of our bounding box which is our vector so if I just click apply you'll see that the text has been fit to the bounds of our vector but you'll see that it's come in the wrong way so what we need to do is just reverse these dimensions around so I'm just going to type 3 in there in the width and three quarters of an inch in the height. Just apply that like so. And I'm just going to close that. As what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to rotate the uh, text to fit perfectly in the box there. Now again there's two ways to do this. With it selected I can simply go to the transform objects tool and rotate selected objects by choosing to rotate about its center and giving it the angle of 90 degrees and then clicking apply like so. Or I can undo that by pressing Ctrl Z and I can just use solely the transform shortcuts. So you'll see when I put this in transform mode, you see that I get the dark uh, blue nodes in each of the corners. And these are rotation nodes. As you can see, when I grab a hold of one, I can start rotating that text. Now all I need to do is start dragging in the direction and then type in 90, enter and I'll then rotate that text 90 degrees in the same fashion as using the transform objects tools. So I'm just going to zoom to fit so I'm just going to select this icon here on the view toolbar like so. Now one of the last things that we're going to create is we're going to create an area so we can contain a vector texture. Now how we're going to do that is we first of all going to take this vector outline and we're going to offset that inwards to form part of our boundary. So I'm just going to select the offset vectors icon there and I'm just going to choose to offset the vectors inwards and I'm going to offset inwards by a distance of a quarter of an inch and I'm just going to make sure none of these options are checked as I don't want to create sharp corners, I don't want to delete the original and I don't want to select the new so I'm just going to select that button to offset inwards like so and then I'm going to close the form and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to Select the polyline tool and I'm going to use the information that I get from the smart cursor to enable me to draw the extra vectors that I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the polyline tool and I'm just going to snap to halfway in between this section here and this section here. And you'll see that when the icon of the mouse turns to this one here. And all I'm going to do is simply click with the left mouse button and I'm going to drag up vertically. So I'm going to keep make sure that angle there maintains that 90 degrees. I'm just going to follow this vertical line until I get to this point here. And just click like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click to come out of the draw polyline tool. And I'm going to create a copy of this vector one and a half inches to the right. Now what I'm going to do is again I'm going to utilize the transform shortcuts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, now it's in transform mode, I'm going to hold the left mouse button down, I'm going to start moving it to the right, like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the amount that I want to move it by to the right. So I'm going to type 1.5, you can see that down the bottom right hand corner. And then 
I'm going to hold the control key down to create me a copy and press the enter key at the same time and you'll see that that has now created a, an exact copy of that vector for me one and a half inches to the right. Again I'm just going to select this one just put it into transform mode and I'm just going to drag this middle icon here and I'm just going to drag that up to here and just to join that to these vectors up here like so. And it's this actual area here that I want to keep for my vector texture. The rest I'm going to trim away now using the interactive trim tool. So if we select the interactive trim tool, make sure that we've got rejoined trim sections on and we're going to start trimming these vectors down. So the first section we're going to actually remove and trim away is this section here and the order does matter here. So we just select that first, then we're going to come up to the top and trim that away. Then we're going to trim this part away. Then I'm going to trim the rest of these sections here, like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this section here, but then I'm also going to zoom in and just keep that trimmed corner piece there, like so. And then what I can do is I can simply close that as I can simply select this vector that remains and press delete on the keyboard to remove that. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to select this icon here again just to recenter my work area. Now the texture that I'm actually going to fill into that area is, is just a simple crosshatch which I'm just going to engrave. So all I need to do is utilize the draw polyline tool and when we're in that we're just going to hover our mouse around about here and I'm just going to start dragging until we get around about 45 degrees like so. And we want it to be around about three inches in length. So when the actual angle is correct, all I need to do really is type in the letter, or the number, sorry, three, and enter, and that will then create that length of three for us. And I'll just right click to exit the, the draw polyline tool. And if I just zoom out a little bit, you'll see that that's created that perfectly for me there. Now to create the crosshatch effect, I'm again, I'm gonna utilize that array copy tool. So with it selected, I'm just going to go into the Array Copy tool and I'm going to want 40 copies of this and just one column and this time I'm not going to use a gap, I'm going to use an offset in between each of them and it's going to be a negative offset as if I use a positive offset it's going to go up in my drawing space if I choose a negative uh, offset it's going to go down in my workspace so if I just type in minus 0.2 of an inch there and I do, before I choose to copy these, I do actually want to group the copies else they'll all be individual vectors and it'll make it hard to select each of them with other vectors around my work area. So if I group them, it'll make it much easier to select. So once we've done that, simply press copy and that'll then copy all those down for me like so. So simply close out of that form and I'm just gonna press F on the keyboard to zoom to fit. And then what I'm gonna do to create the other side of my crosshatch pattern is simply just mirror the selected objects. So with them still selected, I'm going to go to mirror selected objects and I want to create a mirrored copy and I don't want to flip about job center so make sure that's not checked and then I'm simply going to click the button to flip horizontal like so. So the last thing to do would be to actually cut this down to fit the actual boundary that we created for this earlier. So I'm just going to close out of this form and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these diagonal lines that we created. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to drag from right to left over the selection and that will then highlight any vectors that are caught within that drag box. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom right in to try and choose the vector that's hiding. So I'm just going to hold the shift key down, I'm just going to select our boundary that we created earlier and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tool here which acts a bit like a cookie cutter. So we want to clear all the vectors that appear outside of the boundary. Now what happens is any vectors that you select before the last one is going to be the ones that are going to get cut by the last vector. So as we selected our boundary last it's going to cut basically all the diagonal shapes to size within our vector boundary. So clear outside boundary, select clear and you'll see that all those diagonal lines are now cut to fit within that boundary. 
Now they are all at the moment all single vectors, so it would be wise now to actually group them all together to make handling them a little easier. So I'm just going to go over to here underneath Edit Objects, I'm going to select to group those. As you can see, that's now group those vectors, and then I'm just going to go and zoom to fit our work area, and just click in the white space just to deselect those vectors. And with that, that completes all the vector creation for our Vectric widget. So please join us again in the Toolpath in video. I will link to that in the related video section of the tutorial browser. And thank you for watching.